Morning, Trainiacs. That was hellish. 4,200 meters in an hour 35 with some uh, very difficult filled up with water pole boy swimming and some tempo trainer stuff and a bunch of things to work on from Tower 26 and someone who I think might be the biggest swimming YouTuber around. Not Jerry from Tower 26, Brent from Effortless Swimming. He analyzed my stroke. We're gonna show you that today. And ouch. So, all right, Trainiacs, a little bit of background, and then we will get into the goods of today. Brent from Effortless Swimming, he's exploded on YouTube, and he actually comes really highly recommended from me, highly recommended from Jerry Rodriguez, Tower 26. The reason for that is that he's really good with swim instruction, specifically with the background of understanding that triathletes and age groupers need different techniques than just pure swimmers. I think so much of the downside of a lot of traditional swim coaches is that a lot of the former just elite swimmers try to coach age groupers the same way that they were coached as elite swimmers and age groupers who lack mobility, lack flexibility, lack body awareness, lack millions and millions of meters in a pool, they can't make those same changes. So here's Brent and if you want to go check out his page, he's got 80,000, 100,000 subscribers. He's huge. Check him out. The link to his channel will be in the description below and a link to it at the end of the video where I will talk about how this plays into what Jerry from Tower 26 told me and how Brent has told me to fix this. It's interesting stuff. He's good. Hey, Taryn. So the first angle I look at is normally from the side view under the water. Now here, I will typically look at body position to start with, and I like to see the three touch points of the top of the head, the hips, and the heels, all at the surface. And you can see here, for the most part, really good line through the body. So you've got your head, you've got your hips, heels, up near the surface there. So good line through the body, you're horizontal, we're not creating any extra drag with the legs and the hips dropping down there. So in terms of body position, all right, sitting up pretty well there. Looking at head position, now this is something that's individual to everyone, but you can see here you're within the range that I normally like to sort of stick within, anywhere from straight down to 45 degrees in front. You see you're in that sort of slightly further down range. I like to see the back of the neck being extended, so long through the neck, top of the head just out of the water. So it ticks both of those boxes, which is terrific. Looking at the breathing there too, you can see that bottom goggle stays in the water. So you're getting split vision, which is terrific. So really good breathing position there with the, the head. I think that's, uh, that's excellent. Then what I'll typically look at is the kick. Now we haven't got it that much, uh, that many views of the, the kick there. Um, from what I can see here, it, it all looks pretty good. You may be able to um, possibly bend the knees even just a little bit more. I'm just kind of looking at See this kick here, look at this left leg, how you've actually got room, if you want, to bend that knee a little bit more in order to get the heel to break the surface just slightly more. Um, let's have a look what happens on this next kick. Yeah, same thing, I reckon that left leg, left knee can bend just slightly more in order to get the heel up you know, a little bit more. But overall, I think the kick is, um, you know, you're working well with it. I like to see this whip down with the foot so in the down kick, we want to see that coming down with a bit of a whip. That's where you get the that little bit of propulsion. And on both sides, I think you're getting that pretty well. You can also see you've got good ankle flexibility there. Particularly, you know, if you're doing triathlons, it's pretty common to have uh, not great ankle flexibility. But you can see you're doing a uh, you know, nice downwards kick there. And the foot actually sort of comes back from the line of the leg. So that's uh, that's terrific. Then looking at the entry on this left side, so I always like to see the fingertips entering first. Left hand, that comes in fingers first, which is great. And then extending out in front and getting to this starting catch position really well. So I call this the starting catch position, which is basically fingers below the wrist, wrist below the elbow, and uh, I'm looking for sort of a, a long line out in front there. So pretty good starting catch position on this left side. I just wanna have a look at that on the right side. 
So this right one comes in, goes fingers first as well, extends out in front, and again, nice position here, all right? So fingers blow wrist, wrist blow elbow. What I probably would like to try and get to, let's say in the next couple of weeks, is that I'm just looking at this position here. When I'm normally looking at this side view, I like to see the hips rotated just a little bit more. So this left hip here, probably like to see that lift up a little bit more and possibly just a bit more rotation through the shoulders in order to reach out a little bit further. So I think you've got room to kind of just extend, reach slightly more by rotating the hips and the shoulders just a bit further. Um, and it's kind of like you, you want to make it feel like you're reaching for something just slightly out of reach. Um, and the reason I say that is because when we look at the top view, um, I'll show you that I think we can kind of make a, a longer, narrower line through the body if we can do those two things, which is rotate a little bit more and reach out a little bit more. The other thing I'd probably look to do is just keep the arm out in front, kind of spend a bit more time with this arm kind of sliding or, or surfing out in front just a little bit longer. So I'll play it here for you. To me, I, th I think the hand probably goes into the catch a little bit too soon. Now, I, you know, it's slightly different. If you're doing triathlon and open water, the stroke rate is often going to come up a bit higher than what it will in the pool. But that said, you can still spend that little bit of extra time in this reach phase uh, because what tends to happen there is you kind of get this last little bit of travel and distance per stroke while the hand here is pressing back. And if this goes too early into the catch, one, it can make it a little bit harder to set up a nice high elbow catch, but also you, you just miss out on that last little bit of distance per stroke. So um, I'll just look to add a little bit more reach and extension, spending that a little bit longer in that phase of the stroke. Now, then looking at the, the catch, so the way I sort of define a high elbow catch is if we were to draw a line from your shoulder to your hand, the elbow will be above, so on this side of that straight line. So that's how I define a, a high elbow catch. Now, obviously you don't need to go for something extreme like a, you know, a 90 degree catch takes crazy amounts of mobility and strength to be able to hold that. But what I will typically like to um, typically work towards is over time, incremental improvements in this position here. So you can see where that right arm is. If we just sort of pause it in that phase of the stroke. So it's, you know, it's a slightly drop position, but I still think you hold very good water. Like if you're swimming 130s for half Ironman, you know, you're, you're obviously swimming well. So I think this is still quite a good catch position, but let's say in the next three to six, possibly 12 months, if we can get this being a little bit further forwards or sort of higher than that straight line, that's gonna be a, a huge improvement in your speed. That's where I think for the most part that 125, eventually 120 can, can come from is by improving that position. So if you were, let's say a lot of the pros will typically be somewhere up around here, right? So what that will change will just be the direction of the forearm and the hand as it presses back. So you can see with that green line, it's primarily gonna be pressing back on the water where you currently are. Still not bad pressing back, but primarily down on the water. So that's kind of what we wanna incrementally improve. Now, in terms of how do you go about that, there's some drills that I'll give you that'll, uh, that will help with that sort of position. And uh, it will take time. It will probably feel a bit awkward in the beginning and it's not gonna happen straight away. But over the next uh, three, six to 12 months, you can really make some uh, big gains with that. And I think it's worth focusing on. So um, the one other thing I just wanna point out that may contribute to that extra reach out in front is the exit of the hand here. So see this position right here. If we, if we draw a line through the forearm and the hand, and then kind of trace it as we as we go. All right, so it's coming up in that direction. There. So can if we if we look at that in terms of where's the hand or the forearm pressing, you see how it's kind of coming up towards the water. So if we look at that from a propulsion or, or the direction of the force there, it's more coming up in that direction. So I think if we can get a little bit. Um, 
kind of shallower at the back of the stroke. So instead of coming up in this direction, we can get the palm of the hand or the hand pressing back past the hip. That will be a, yeah, a big change from, well, from two sides of things. One, just kind of finishing off the stroke with a little bit extra, plus it will make it a lot easier to then keep this arm out in front a little bit longer too. All right, and I think it's probably similar on the, the left side, although it's a little bit harder to see. But yeah, I reckon it's just finishing a bit, a bit too too deep there. So that's the um, that's the side view. Now, just showing you what that looks like from the from the front. We'll just bring it back here. Okay, so I just want to show you the uh, the angle of the sh or the shoulder rotation here. Now, looking from the front, what I'll typically see is uh, with most. Uh, pro you know the really fast the fastest swimmers in triathlon or, or the pro swimmers they're normally somewhere from about 32 degrees up to sometimes a maximum of about 45 but normally sitting around the sort of 35 to 40 degrees so you can see your shoulder rotation is about 32 um, which is why i think we can just get slightly more shoulder rotation to help with this extra reach then just with the catch so starting in a great position you're in line with the shoulder here all right, so hands in line with the, the shoulder right there. Then you can see here is the fingertips point down. Really good job of that. Fingertips pointing down. This angle here, so normally I look for it to be 100 to 120 degrees. 125, not far at all from that ideal angle. So 100 to 120 is where we want to be. So in order to kind of make that change, what I will often try and get to is shoulders, upper arm, one straight line, then the hand, forearm kind of, not quite there, but having that in one straight line, and then the forearm and the hand somewhere uh, on the inside of that elbow. So you can see that's about 104 degrees. The biggest change is really this, this um, elbow and hand has just gone out in that direction. That's, that's the main change. And the reason that we like to try and keep that as one line instead of one, two, three, all right, so the shoulders, upper arm is one line, is that's when you can really engage the lats well. And it's like if you try and pull yourself out of the pool with the arms in that position, just or the elbows sort of forwards of the shoulders, uh, it's you don't have as much strength there. So that's what I'll, I'll typically see with the those really top swimmers there. Is that all in line? Just looking at um, the other angles, I'll just I won't spend too much time on them because I think you're doing really well. Is over the top here. I like to use the analogy of swimming on on train tracks in terms of the hand should enter roughly in line with your ears or your shoulder when it goes in. And every time it does that, it should reach and extend on those train tracks. We want to try and avoid any sort of crossover here. And you do a really good job of entering left hand in line with that shoulder, out in front, and same on this right side, right in line with that shoulder, extending forwards. And again, on those train tracks, which is great. Now, just from this view here, um, if you can see this, so see how when you're at full extension on the right side, this right arm isn't completely straight. There's a bit of bend in the elbow. And to me, sort of here, it looks like you're a little bit flat through the hips and through the shoulders. So if you can just kind of get that extra rotation that I was uh, talking about before and straighten that arm, reach out a little bit more, it's going to um, make you a little bit longer in the water. Plus, it'll make you more. It'll make you narrower in the water. In terms of, if we look at this from here, with that extra rotation, you'd probably fit in between those sort of green lines. And yeah, it doesn't look like a whole, you know, a whole lot of change. But any extra drag that you create in the water is really magnified just because of the, you know, how thick the water is. So that would just be the um, the change I'd be be looking for there. Timing looks uh, looks really good. And then the final shot from here, All right? So with your recovery, I think you're recovering really, really well. This is a great angle. So the, the elbow's relatively high, fingers are out to the side and the hands relax. So 102 degrees through there, typically what I wanna try and aim for. And then same on this left side, nice open recovery, great for open water swimming and triathlon. So um, I think this recovery position is is terrific, 112 degrees. So then the, the question is, all right, so what's uh, how do we go about making those changes? What I'll do is send you some, uh, some drills that are specific to each of those key points. And uh, all I'd recommend doing is within your warm-up, every time you swim, is practice a couple of those, well, practice those drills uh, for four to six 25s each within your warm-up 
working on each of those things uh, and then just go about your normal swim session because what we're looking to do is essentially change your habits, change your, your motor patterns that you've, um, that you've built up over time and the best way to change it is to as often, as regularly as you can, be focused on those key points and often it can help to do drills to break down each of those things in a more sort of isolated or sp- specific movement and, um, and really focus on it and concentrate on it. So, you know, I think in the next sort of three to six months, there's a really good chance that you could bring that pace down, sort of half Ironman pace, down under that 130 to 125 and then onwards from there. So, yes, it takes time, takes practice, but swimming really, really well already. And uh, I think with these few changes, that can really make a difference in your stroke over the coming months and years. Good job. So now I've got Jerry from Tower 26 giving me swim instruction. I got Brent from Effortless Swimming giving me swim instruction. How do I piece this all together? Well, actually, a huge number of the things that Brent said, basically, I've got to tip my left hip more. Jerry said the same thing. I need to push back further and better. Jerry said the same thing. I need a bent elbow. Jerry said the same thing. The one thing that they do disagree on is that Jerry recommends as I'm coming in to get rid of that that catch up, like that glide, is that I immediately start the catch going outwards and downwards, whereas Brent says going out and keeping that glide for just a little bit further. I gotta do a little bit of thinking about that because if I want to speed up the catch and get rid of that catch up swim stroke, that's a multi-year project. Oh, and interesting, both Jerry and Brent said that getting a proper catch with a bent elbow, they're like, that's a lifetime of work that you got ahead of you. Like, ooh, that's encouraging. And they also agree that how I fix this is with some drills and how you do the drills is like 25 meters, doing the drill immediately into 25 meters or more of swimming, focusing on that drill. So what I did this morning was I did a little drill that Brent recommended, tucking that elbow in and just going like this to feel the tricep activating at the end of the stroke. I did 25 meters of that and then instantly went into 25 meters of actual swimming working on that movement right there. Now, like I say, Brent has an awesome channel. Thank you very much to Brent. Go check out his channel. Link is in the description below and it'll be somewhere on the screen. I don't, not exactly sure where. Check it out. Go subscribe to him. He's got awesome swim tips. Later, Trainiacs. I wonder what Brent calls his Trainiacs. Swimiacs doesn't have the same.